Okay, this is the second video segment in this series that I'm making, and the plan is that to create that part uh, and on it create these features that you see, the red features that you see, and then come back and use the uh, Catillo's default uh, uh, free meshing or octahedral uh, uh, octree tetrahedral element to mesh it. Uh, now, uh, in the follow-up video segment, I'm going to use extruded mesh. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, create this thing in Katia. On the vertical plane, I will create a 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter uh, square. 40 by 40. Okay, exit. And on the horizontal plane, on the XY plane, oops, on the XY plane, I will sketch that spline and uh, this spline. This spline is going to be the center curve of that uh, ripped operation. So there's four control points one, two, three, four, and the coordinates are given. So let me uh, go back here and create four points. The first one is going to be 0, 0. I'm going to type in the coordinates, 0, 0. Uh, next one is going to be, uh, let me see, the coordinate was 40 and minus 5, 40 and minus 5. Next one is going to be 80 and minus 15, 80. Tab minus 15. And the last one is going to be 160. 160 and minus 20. Tab minus 20. Uh, minus 20. Okay. So these four points are created. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a spline go through them. Through this point and that point. And that point, and the last one is over here. Okay, and make sure that these four points that you created, you created right there, from the tree or from the uh, from uh, from the screen. These four points, make sure you turn them into uh, construction element, because otherwise, uh, Katia will say that I cannot rip along that. Op it's going to make it an open curve, basically. Here. And Katia is not going to rip that. So just turn it into a construction right there. See that construction? Or construction elements now. Exit. All right. And then I'm going to uh, rip using the rib operation. This You have to go part design. There's the part design. So you rip that profile along the center, center curve and right there. Okay, now if you had if you had those four points sitting there without turning into construction element, it would have complained. Okay, so let's by the way make it out of aluminum. Uh, apply apply material. Okay, right there. Apply material, metal, aluminum on the part. Okay, now. I will extract, go to uh, wireframe and uh, go to uh, generative, generative shape design or wireframe and surface design, which is the simple version of this particular generative shape design, and uh, extract. Extraction is under operations toolbar, the third icon from the left, uh, find extract. Actually, there's a bunch of things on the left, third icon, but this is the one that we want. So this one is going to be the side face that we're extracting. Notice that it extracted the face. You can see that the color is ivory. And I will also extract the end, although it is really not necessary for the present problem. For the present problem, it's not necessary. But to be consistent with uh, the, the, the strategy that I outlined here, see that? I did extract, extract, so two extractions. Just, just to be consistent with that tree, uh, I'm, I'm going to extract that one too. Uh, just rem 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 
In this particular problem where I'm using free meshing, I don't need to do that. But for the follow-up video where this is actually a break mesh, uh, this extraction is needed. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let, let me do that. It's unnecessary here. But, okay, good. Okay, so uh, then we're going to create a, a plane which is uh, three, uh, which is uh, 30, uh, 30 millimeters away from the exit plane. So let's create a plane there, the offset from uh, exit plane, 30 millimeter, and on it, on it, I will sketch uh, those three features that you see there, a circle here. The actual dimension doesn't matter, but uh, I, I ball it and make sure that it's roughly the same as what I see, what you see in the transfer, in the slides. And there is the little rectangular patch. Okay. And there is the square patch. Okay. Exit. Okay. And then I project that. Projection is in the wireframe and surface design that you see. A project is right there. Wireframe and surface design or generative shape design. There's a project. Project uh, that sketch. Now make sure that this nearest solution is unchecked because if you just leave it like that, okay, and you select the support, the side face, it will only project the piece of that sketch which was closest to that extracted surface. So if you want all of them to be there, just uncheck that, say okay. It's gonna say that there's basically three separate pieces. Uh, do you want to keep all of them? The answer is yes, keep all sub elements, and there we are. So right now we have uh, uh, three, let me hide this, we have uh, uh, three things, three features on that, uh, which are the projections of what I did earlier. Now, make sure you fill it right there. Here's a fill. See that? Fill. Fill this projection. And you say OK. And keep all of them. All it's saying is that when I filled it, there is uh, three separate surfaces that they, they're not connected. As soon as you hide this, you can see that there, there are three surfaces here there's one here which is hard to see you can see that and there's another one and there's another one okay in fact if i do well let me see to to make to see it better maybe if i make this a wireframe and surface design no actually uh ch change it to wireframe it was not very really helpful let me see is this better no this is not helpful either uh, how about this no back to where it was Believe me, there are, there are three surfaces here. Okay, the next thing and the last thing to do is sew this. The, the fill that we, we, we made, sew it to the back face. Back face meaning this, uh, well, back face means this object, okay? So sewing is not here. This is the generative shape design. So you go to part design, uh, part design. And sewing is uh, right there in the surface. You see that in the surface space features? Sewing is right there. Uh, so you select uh, this fill, make sure the arrow is point in, okay? And uncheck the simple simplified geometry, uncheck that and say okay. And now these features are created. I can go and put a clamp here, or put a load, uh, a, a put a, um, force there and the pressure there. If you don't saw that, this won't happen. Now, uh, let's save this thing. So file, save management, save as uh, July 10 in the default element. Say okay. Very good. Uh, we now go to uh, a generative shape, a generative uh, structure analysis, or the finite element module analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. It's a static analysis. We're going to choose a four millimeter size, four millimeter size for the element. It's too big right now, and use linear because you want it to run faster. Now let's check the check the the mesh. Put the cursor on nodes and elements. Right click mesh visualization. Okay, so if you look at this thing from close. 
we should be able to see those uh, uh, those uh, features. That see that there's a circle right there. You see this? Let me put it in a different view. You see this right there? This is the projection of that circle. If you look at the uh, look at it for the rectangle, it's right there. See that? This rectangle. This is the projection of that rectangle right there. And there is the square patch square patch for pressure. If we had not shown it, these features would not be created. They are created, but they're not going to be talking to the part. And therefore, when you put a load on it, it's going to put it on the entire face. If you sew it, then... Uh, so, as a matter of fact, for you just to see it better, I'm going to un, uh, unhide the part. You can see that. See? There was a circle here. There was a, there was a rectangle there and a square here. Okay, so let me put this thing back. Uh, save this file, save management, the analysis you want to save, uh, it was July 10 in the default elements, analysis 1, and there we are. Okay, uh, we're going to deactivate the mesh, okay. And we're going to put the clamp on this. Now, I'm going to hide. Let me hide this and actually put it on the face. Uh, I, I cannot do this uh, down the road when I do extruded uh, meshes, which are unrelated to, uh, to uh, uh, unrelated to the uh, the solid part, okay? So, and then here also, I'm going to hide this piece, hide this, there's something here, that fill is sitting there, uh, or that saw is sitting there, hide it, oops, undo, okay, so, uh, say okay, now here, uh, yeah, so, uh, clamp, where's the clamp, right there, Okay, I'll put it there. I'm going to put a force here. So, uh, distributed force. Now, hide this. Put the cursor there. Hide it. And you can put it on there. Without sewing, this would not have been possible. Okay? Uh, I also want to make sure, I'm going to go back, check, make sure this is put on, the, uh, on that feature. Okay? So, this is good. Uh, 500. 500 Newton, actually, 500 Newton. My units uh, are in pounds. I have to change them. That's okay. And uh, pressure on this, uh, it was, uh, I think, let me check that. Uh, 500 kilopascal. Okay, so uh, let's go back there. Uh, 500 K P A. I think it was 500, wasn't it? 500 kilopascal. Okay. All right. I just want to check this. I want to check this clamp, make sure that actually it was put on the right place. So uh, under restraint, under the restraint, this clamp one, clamp two. Put, put on that face. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, very good. Uh, this is it. Uh, save it and run. Okay, so uh, run. Done. So let's look at the uh, one meter stress distribution. Uh, change the rendering here to material shading. You can see what happened. This is where the clamp was, right there. This is where the force was. And this is where the pressure was. Okay. I'm not interested in numbers because we're not checking accuracy here. We just want to see how it was possible to create features like that and 
apply, restrain, or roll. Let me also tell you that some people may be tempted to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to draw something here, for example, and then pat it a little bit. Uh, well, first of all, if these are, this side was flat, that would be easy because you're going to draw a circle, pat it by a tiny little amount and put the pressure or put the clamp on that face and draw a, a rectangle here, pat it tiny little bit if this was a flat surface, pat it a little bit and then put the force on it. And if these were, this was side was flat, there's no problem, you can do it. But uh, in general, that uh, does not work. So in the follow-up, in the follow-up video segment, I'm going to create this guy, this guy here with extruded uh, uh, basically break elements, okay? And repeat the problem. Uh, however, I will also, I will also uh, uh, create the model once again, although the first four minutes, worst three minutes was creation of the model. I think it's worth doing it one more time, although you can, you know, it's a repetition of this particular video segment. All right.